Hey, what's up everyone? This is Silver Slayer. Thank you for tuning into this video. I am bringing you the largest precious metals producers in the world from a global scale. This is interesting stuff to take note of because this is the future of precious metals. This is where all the potential lies. These are the biggest suppliers, the people that are pumping it, you know, through the world on, on a global scale. And it's really, it's not only interesting, but it's important to stay tuned of because this is where precious metals is headed. This is where the potential is. These are the largest suppliers. So these are the people we need to take, you know, note of and definitely focus on. But I found a really interesting piece while I was searching through all this that was actually shared from my friend. And this is talking about Iran being uh, one of the top seven precious metals exporters in the world. I found a little article and there's also a segment in here I want to I want to go over because it is actually pretty important it's pretty important to note so let's dive into this a little uh, real quick so talks about a senior Iranian official said that his country is one of the leading countries in the world in the field of extracting and exporting precious metals adding that not all potentials are still tapped and the country's capacity is not fully activated saying there's still future there's still potential and they're not they're not they're, they haven't dug all the silver out of the ground or even the gold and they're, they're still you know going to be supplying more and more actually that's pretty crazy still you know incorporating in the top seven they're still have they still have more potential and they still have more to offer and to bring to the table but um I want to go into this part because this is where uh, I was. This is what was pretty interesting about this article. So they're going to say um, Iran is among the top seven precious metals producers in the world, and paying attention to the sector will help promote industry in the country. And he added the industry will help bring in more foreign exchanges, meaning this is really healthy for precious metals that, you know, they're supplying other areas of the world this is going to help you know smaller businesses big business but also not only for just the producers but also for the consumers as well making it more accessible this is really good news and i'm glad to see that you know um, a, a foreign country like iran is um you know in the loop as well but here's an article that's talking about all of you know the whole on a global scale what are the top i'm not going to go over all the small details but i'm going to just share you know the top 10 biggest or largest silver producers is pretty interesting so mexico's number one um so it's also interesting because not only they're number one for for silver but they're also the second largest producer in gold and number two is poland uh, number three, Switzerland. Number four is Canada. Number five is Russia. Number six, Peru. The link will be in the description if you want to check these out. UK is in there. Uh, India. So um, th I thought this was pretty interesting. These are really interesting because it's not only just gold and silver, but they're talking about other precious metals as well, palladium. Um, so it, it is interesting, and I definitely want to take note on this. Maybe I, I might dive into some of these, um, some of these producers, and you know, research individually. You know, what their story is or what they're bringing to the table. I th I think that stuff is pretty interesting, especially when it comes to other precious metals like copper as well. But anyways, um, you know, I'm curious uh, where in the future. You know who's going to take over if this is you know um, if this is a stable supply from these companies or these businesses and also how it's going to be affecting the gold and silver markets on a on a futuristic scale because anytime I'm looking at gold and silver I'm trying to think forwards because it's an investment you're investing into your future so if you can kind of take take insight on the future you know we don't have a crystal ball but all you can do is look at the stats and look at the information that's given to us you know given in front of us and that's how you can kind of you know take advantage of what the future potentials are especially when it comes to precious metals and a market that's you know that can be speculative especially from like etf side of things so you know this stuff is pretty interesting to check out but i also do want to show you guys this because this is pretty interesting this is um you know because we're talking about supply and demand you know those people are supplying the silver the supplying the gold and silver the precious metals they're they're digging it out the ground producing it to the world but if no one's buying it then then you know there's not really a market there's not really a a profit uh, uh, you know to be made so you know supply and demand is really key especially when it comes to you know the market of precious metals not only from an ETF side of it which means exchange tra traded funds but also from a physical bullion standpoint so with any investment, low supply, high demand, what does that do? That shoots the price up. You know, we saw a silver shortage earlier. We saw a shortage of American Eagles. You know, shortages are a real thing. A lot, a lot of times if something isn't as profitable, especially with, with physical gold and silver, because to bring the supply to the table, you have to dig it out the ground. It's not like 
It's not like cryptocurrency. It's not like ETFs where it's it's all digital. You actually have to, to dig this stuff out of the ground. And if you're not making the profits or the, you're not reaching the profit margin from, from you know, wherever the, the, the mining company or even from the, the companies that are producing it, then there's no the motivation to dig it out the ground isn't there it's not as it's not as important the the focus isn't there because everything runs around money money is you know money makes the world go round and if people aren't making money if they're not profiting in in a certain area they're not going to be as motivated to do it so this chart is really interesting it goes in millions of ounces so you can see from 2009 to 2018 what the the ounces are from mining production, net government sales, scrap, net hedging supply, it goes from jewelry, coins and bars, silverware, industrial fabrication, um, physical demand, physical surplus, deficit, net balance. So this is a interesting table to look at to really see, you know, where silver goes in the world, what it's used for, what are the ratios, what are the actual numbers. And also not only just that, but as we go through the years in the last 10 years, how it's been affected, you know, it's really, it, it shares a lot of information. You know, this table shares a lot of information on, you know, the world of silver or precious metals in general. I also want to point, you can also see during these years, if you didn't, okay, let's put it like this, 2011 silver hit $50. So knowing that, these numbers in 2011 are going to look different than the other years. And, you know, right, you know, like back when silver was 20, 21, 22 dollars, you know, in this area, the numbers are going to be different than now. So you can see how how everything is intertwined, how everything is, you know, it, it, they all correlate. They're, everything is correlated to each other, especially in the world of precious metals. And I think this table is really interesting to check out. So let's, let's look into it. So it goes in millions of ounces. So the mining production in, I'm going to compare 2009 to 2018 and said, I'm not going to go over every year. We'll just do the, you know, the earliest year to the latest. So 2009, 717 million ounces were produced. 2018 855 million ounces which you know doesn't seem like a big change but think of that that's you know that's up that is almost 150 million ounces more that's a, that's a big that's 130 million ounces more produced in the last 10 years which is a lot of silver if you think about it especially when you're looking at what silver is used for you know or how much is used in jewelry and stuff like that bullion so anyways um net government sales um, or we won't do that because okay. So let's go into um, let's go into scrap because this is an interesting chart. So, 2009 there was uh 200 million ounces scrapped, and 2018 151 million ounces scrapped. Now, scrapping is interesting because gold is is scrapped a lot higher than a, of a rate than silver is. A lot of gold is remelted. It's it's taken out of laptops. People scrap their jewelry, their rings, their wedding bands, whatever the case is. But silver isn't as profitable to scrap because, you know, it's so cheap. So a lot of silver is lost in technology, not at the rate, nowhere near the rate that gold is being, you know, scrapped or remelted. So I thought that was a pretty interesting, um, I thought that was a pretty interesting thing to, uh, thing to see where silver's actually, it's gone down 50 million ounces since uh, the last 10 years. So jewelry. 176 million ounces in 2009, 2000, 2018, 212 million ounces. So jewelry demand is up. Coins and bars has literally doubled. Um, that's an interesting one. Silverware is about the same. I'm trying to see anything that stands out. So um, electronics. I thought actually, so electronics is interesting because we see the technological advancement or the technological era that we're advancing in. I would think the tech, the, the the electronics would be higher, especially because we need more and more silver as all these new gadgets come out. So I definitely think this number is going to keep appreciating in the future, especially in the next 10 years. I actually just made a video, I think yesterday, talking about silver's price in the next 10 years and and um, how much potential it has, especially from the technological era we're advancing in, because silver is definitely needed and, and used more and more every day, because nothing performs the rate that silver does. But, um, so let's keep going down. So physical demand, this is an interesting one. So the physical demand of silver is 837 million ounces, and uh, that was in 2009, and then in 2018, 1,033. So that's, that's 1 billion ounces of silver, 
I mean, um, that that's actually it's pretty crazy that the physical demand is actually twenty. It's almost it's almost actually twenty times higher than when I was looking at the chart from um from early nineteen nineties because when I made that video the other day talking about um the global supply and where it all goes it was it was in the hundreds of millions of ounces but it was a, a much smaller number so to see in in you know 20 30 years to see the physical demand that much higher it really does show that silver is being is it, well i guess it also does incorporate that the technology is better to dig it out the ground which you know also does make sense because as technology advances we have better equipment and we learn how to dig it out the ground better but that's still a pretty high number it's a pretty big way to look at it um i do want to see though okay so inventory so price per ounce so here's the price per ounce so let's look at this this is what i wanted to show you guys though because in 2009 uh, silver was fourteen dollars and sixty cents an ounce, and then we see in two thousand eleven, actually it was it was it hit around forty eight dollars, but right here it shows thirty five dollars, and then you see all the way right here we're back down to fifteen. So I got into silver around this time when it was you know twenty one twenty two dollars an ounce in two thousand thirteen, and you can see so my price the way I see silver right now is really low. A lot of people have got in right here though. So, you know, um, they're used to, to, to $15 silver. So if it does go up to $20, that's really high for them because they're desensitized to that $50, $15 level. Where I got in around here, so $23, you know, I'm getting in around, I'm paying $22, $23 an ounce for an American Eagle. So when it's down here to $15, I'm looking at it as a really good price. So even if it does go back up to $20, I'm still used to paying that price because that's where I started at. So you can see that, so you, so you can see where depending on, you know where you got into the market can easily uh, affect or you know um, resemble what you what your opinion of the price is so I just thought that was pretty interesting to add in but you know I'm curious what you guys thought about this you know just to kind of recap though Iran being one of the top seven silver producers or precious metal producers in the world pretty interesting stuff especially for the future especially in foreign countries looking at the top 10 silver producers all the links will be in the description of this video if you want to check them out as well and then we also have this table i'm curious what you guys think about this stuff did, did anything jump out at you what well, you know are you interested or was it interesting to see you know some of these some of these countries you know that are the top dogs in in the world of silver producing but you know I'm, I'm just curious what you think about this especially heading in the future of silver anyways guys i hope you did enjoy this video if you did make sure to smash that like button subscribe if you're new i post daily videos in the world of precious metals i make you know, I may I do giveaways, I do tutorial videos, I do poll videos, I do unboxings, I do pretty much everything. I try to update you guys with the world of precious metals and what's going on for you guys so you can stay in tune and just keep, you know, stacking, keep your stacking journey, you know, up to date. But anyways, thanks for tuning in. This was Silver Slayer. I will see you guys soon. Peace.